Oh, okay, guys, hello and welcome to MBTV. Um, we are live now, actually, just one sec. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Captain Lost. Wait, oh. Okay, we're having a few technical, technical issues, but uh, I'm Captain Lost from Towers Entertainment. Um, I'm joined by Project Angel. Good evening. How's it going, Project? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Yourself? Yes, I'm pretty good, pretty good. The game's actually started right now, so we've got to get right in to the action. We can't miss anything. Flags have spawned. No, no, time, for no time for introductions. Uh, we actually have the cool. first win going up with Teutonic Knights. Uh, we're going to jump right into the game. Uh, okay. Here we are. Gora's currently one of the Teutonic Knights. Then they took that first round. We didn't quite see it, but I um, apologize for any inconvenience. I'm on a different production setup today, I'm just getting used to a few things. I'd like it to be a few difficulties. Please let us know if there's any problems, tell us in chat. Uh, you can also tweet me at Captain Last. Let us know what's up. Okay. So, what have we got going on here? We've got Warband. Uh, Washington team. Joined uh, late into the WNL. Also with uh, Teutonic Knights. They were here from the start, the Turkish team. Sitting a little bit ahead of Warband at the moment, I think with 12 points to Warband's 9. We've got a clash from both the teams. They're moving straight into the big forest. And as you know, attack each other looks like. We do have two cavalry for each team. Sarathor takes down Kane straight away. Hector takes down Pilot. And again, getting the advantage in this round. Brock goes down, Lockman goes down. Looks like a Pretty much a white ship for Teutonic. Warband still got both the cab up, but um, really not where they need to be at the right time. Knifey goes down eventually. And the Stig goes down. So I don't know who the Stig is, but uh, obviously a top gear fan. Oh, who the Stig is. What's yeah, the well. point of him? <laughs> Did he get released like there? Yeah, I think it was leaked at some stage. Like well, a they changed it, annoyed I him or something. Yeah. Like he put it out in his small topography. I, I, I really I don't, I couldn't care that much. <laughs> we got a Nezen left. And Demon Star. Demon Star's Demon Star. caught out here, yeah, 2v1 situation. It's a pretty pro name, isn't it? Demon Star. What are we going to do against Demon Star? Demon's Tar. Alright, as it goes down as well. So, yeah, a whitewash with Teutonic. Pretty much dominating. We saw this again um, between Bohemians and AB. Swan is generally doing a little bit better on this map. Actually, Teutonic Bar Barbarian War has actually got himself one of those standard horses, and taking those down is not easy, especially when you have the slow fire rates of um, crossbows. So that's going to be, uh, yeah, big problems. Big problems for uh, Warband, let's say. In the minimap, we've got sort of an over overview of where the teams are at the moment. Teutonic wants to get moving into that big forest, they've got their cavalry over in the ruins. Actually sending two players, uh, two foot players towards the ruins as well. That's we've got uh, an archer and a footman. Shuffling over there, Kefren and um, Anuni. Same time, Warband. Looking fairly Let's close to... Uh, one of their players out up to the uh, storm bridge, Demon Star. Going off on a little mooch on his arm. Yeah, he's sort of getting a position behind Chichonic. I think it, you've got to be careful because there's only four of them over here, really. And Warband could... Probably cut them off fairly easily. Well, this they is don't it have now. To deal with a cab, which would move across, but if Demon Star starts distracting these players, he starts rushing. Which he already has done. Um, yeah, Sharon's, Sharon's moving back to deal over. with him. Yeah. And again, Warband again is trying to take advantage of this. They're going to move towards the Teutonic position in the big forest. I think the this is an error by Teutonic. I don't know why they started, considering Demon what they were Star. doing was working. Uh, Kane, Kane does go down, though, to uh, Teutonic Star Arthur, the catch lance. We've got. Oh, that's a big mistake. Warband takes down Denses. The big forest, and it's just two Teutonics against three in the forest right now. If they win this position, they're going to be in a nice advantage in this round. It's a, it's a, a gift, really, from Teutonics to, to Warband. That team kill was totally needless. Miscommunication. Pilot takes down Hector. Sarata doing work for Teutonics' Cav, taking down Logman elsewhere. But Wiper goes down as well, and can you see uh, Warband taking a bit of an advantage in this round? It's six against five. Oh, Baron Wall again, Star you see the Teutonic Cab now. doing so much work here for their team. Demon Star goes down. In comes Nezen, doesn't really do much from, with, from horseback here. And get more kills from the Teutonic Horseman. Tarak takes down Kefren. The Barbarian Wall and Sarathor. I think 
they just gotten all the kills, haven't they? Pretty much the Teutonic Calf this, this round. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they really, yeah, they've won this round. They pull back now for Teutonic. One Warman player left. Gets the Void Teutonic. And Warman had that advantage there, but Teutonic's Cav just looks so much stronger than uh, the Warbands. You know, not a single kill for Warbands Horsemen here, and that's really troubling when you're playing Swadian. Uh, Swadian on field by the river. What do you think about these um, maps and factions anyway, Project? That's pretty even, to be fair, I think, you know. I, I generally prefer balls myself on the open maps, but, you know, yeah. I, I know a lot of people do make the crossballs work, so. When you got but, that. But, sort of both teams have strong cavalry, it's, it's not weak. Uh, Swadias should have the advantage, but we see, you know, Teutonic. We've we got 10 kills for Sir Arthur after three rounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can hardly call He's the cavalry. Just having a day, like it's <laughs> so easy for him right now. And he's still alive, like he's just got so much money now. I don't know where, oh here is, he's dismounted. Oh, is, did, they, did, he kill, did he kill his own horse? Maybe, did Warband take him down? I'm not sure. There's Warpikes, there's Warpikes, all pikes are good for taking down big horses. That will slow down his military gain at least, a little bit. Try that again. And uh, actually no standard war horses for nice here, so it's a bit of a lifeline for Warband. But they're looking really lackluster. I think a lot of people hyped up Warband um, when they joined the league. But actually we've seen they haven't really made much of an impact. They haven't taken down any big teams at least. And this is perhaps their hardest match so far. They lost to Irish Rebels, I think it was 11-5 in their third match. Other than that, they've just been against pretty much easy teams. And Chitoric Knight's giving them a really hard time here. Yeah. We're on week eight, uh, 8 of 12 now, did you say? Uh, yeah, week 8 out of 12 in, in the league. Oh. There's sort of not much time left for making these kind of mistakes, especially for Warband, who are sitting quite away off the pace. I think people are fancying them to be, perhaps not contenders to win, but contenders to do pretty well at least. And that really hasn't happened at all. Right now you can see absolute demolition from Teutonic, really. We'll send a few more players up towards this uh, ridge. They got a crossbow and a, an infantry up there, the Stig and Demon Star. Covered by Nez, and he's actually managed to pick himself up a, a war horse, which is going to be useful for them. I don't know how he's managed to do that, considering he's got like no kills. Did he loot that? No. No, it's a Swadian war horse. Because he probably just didn't spend money in previous rounds. Quite smart, at least. Like oh, just maybe if he would have spent that money earlier on, he could have picked up some yeah, kills with it. Kill, yeah. <laughs> He's really not very effective with his run. He's not getting any knockdowns, not really getting any hits. Not, they're not being a, a effective support cover oh, at all. Sir Arthur losing and you can his see horse. actually, yeah, Sir Arthur loses his horse, which is a big bonus for Warband here. Nezon loses his horse, so straight away to a couch lance there. It's a really sloppy mistake. Should have avoided that. And Warband sort of in a bit of a scrap that they don't want to be in right now. Just like kind of driving into them, Warband backing off, which is always bad in infantry engagement. They've also got a cavalry on the scene in um, Barbarian Warlord, who's really causing a lot of problems. The stick, oh, and it's a team kill for Warband. They really need that. But Tarot getting a double kill, doing some work at least. Barbarian Warlord is, realizes he's a threat and comes in to deal with him, but that's the third kill for Tarot. Oh, another kill for Tarot with the jump slash. Takes down Barbarian Warlord. That was outstanding. Some grep this guy's the, yeah. this guy's the shining light of his team. I'm the only one giving him a chance. There are four Teutonics left against. Five warbands, and that was absolutely great play by Tarok. Sort of a very old player, you can see he's still wearing his VRNG tags from the days when that was his only team. They've now sort of joined with Warband, and uh, his veteran pedigree has really paid off there. A sort of fight between Kefren and Naifu here. Looks like Naifu's playing infantry, and he's actually losing out here in the fight, which is, again, pretty worrying. Oh, Naifu's a dismounted calf, so that's okay. Yeah, it goes down to Kefren in the end. Logma takes down Wiper, so it's four on three. On the flags, we got Aaron elsewhere taking down Demon Star. Warband taking down Kanuni. So it's uh, now three on two. Warband getting the flag advantage, just raising it up a little bit. Kefren's going to approach with no support. Um, his friend Sharon is a long, long way away. Sharon's a, an infantry player capable of great things, but he's not on the scene right now. And against all these crossbows, Kefren's having a really hard time. But making a good job of it, he's not, not gone down yet, which is the most important thing. Well, he's bought the time for his teammate to get there, but. Exactly, yeah. Well, Warband's flag's getting pretty high now. They really just don't need to get these kills. Kefren does go down eventually. Sharon, you got no shield, mate. Warband's flag's higher. I think Warband's going to take this round. 
thanks to, I think, well, a su supremely, a supreme individual effort from Karok, which was just outstanding. Those four kills were oh, really brilliant. Great to see. You guys in the stream, remember guys, you can um, always post in the chat. You can always holler at us on Twitter, at Captain Lust. Splash screen now as the team's going to a break. Got a few issues with our splash screen on this new setup. The team's going to be starting up pretty soon again. Let me just try and fix the titles. I'm sorry about that. What do you, what do you expect we're going to be seeing as we uh, switch over the sides? I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure what to expect, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not familiar with these teams. I don't know their player styles. Maybe you could enlighten us more on that. And uh... That's based on what you've seen, though. I mean, what do you... Think, um, well, Teutonic started off strongly with some great cab play. Um, I think they would have taken that last round if it wasn't for Tarek and you know that amazing bit of play though. Uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd expect to see more of the same, maybe Teutonic's cab. You know, probably in some work squad. As you, as you mentioned already, a strong cab faction. That's going to be hard for them to deal with him. If you look at that, from Sir Arthur, 11, 11 kills, one death in four rounds. It's you know it speaks for itself. That's. Brutal, yeah, couple. almost three kills around that kind of sick average. Right, it looks like we're pretty much live already. Bring up the stream. Second. All right, and here we are. Like right, now spawning. Uh, oh, that's bad. Okay. Well, yeah, they're both next to field. Well, say, no. we got some issues. My server's just gone down. If you give us a bit of commentary while I get back in this situation. Sorry, guys. Turkish internet, not the most Okay, uh, Teutonic are just moving over to the uh, middle forest. Just getting set up there. Warband have made the way across the river as well. They're moving up into the forest, so we're going to engage pretty early on here. Back in the game here, yeah, I can see. Um, Kind of old style meta team just kind of running into the forest. I think it's partly frustration with this map, it's so big and it's been played so much. People just think, oh, well, let's just run at each other now. We both agreed to do that. We'll get some sort of result. So, Arthur starting off strongly though with the kill. Yeah, this is the Teutonic cavalry is so brutal. Warlord and Arthur both getting kills. Sharon as well. We've got a player called DSL playing for Warband right now. Uh, gets a kill back on Sharon, which is quite, quite crucial. He's a really strong player for Teutonic. And Demon starts sitting on the bridge with his bow. He's gonna start being harassed now. Interesting that you can see um, Warband actually going for the long all pike drop for their cavalry. Different choice, you can't actually you can't couch it, so it's got a bit of a disadvantage there, but the damage output is uh, insane. Absolutely insane. That's so much. Just want to catch up with a team kill here, and we've got a bit more of a round on it right now. We've got five Chitonic players left against four of Warband. Kane does go down now to Kanuni. I think Chitonic will be able to take this eventually, but it's not looking too convincing. Nezen finally doing some nice work as Cap's a nice. Um, Bump slash. Hector takes down Logmit though. I think it's going to be curtains. Just the two warband cavalry left. DSL and Nezon. Flag spawns over in the middle position. Nezon goes down to Zarathar. With a joust there. Just DSL off now. Just DSL. I think this guy's going to run away. Probably his, be best. Yeah, keep his gear. Keep his cash. Live up for that big Saranid warhorse, which is so influential on any map. Well, he's thing. been chased down by a barbarian warlord. Who needs to yeah. be careful, you know, it works two ways, you should save your own money, mate. Don't be too desperate for the one kill. Yeah, I'm trying to fight a lance with a sword, it's he's doing, doing all right job. It's going to keep close. Oh, it's <laughs> it's just a mistiming, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, very well, I'll just take him down. So, a gold save for Warband. Got, um, Okana for two Tonic sitting on a minus score right now, which is not where you want to be. Not in these official matches, but I think you won't be too worried. Basically, aggregate scores just a second. I just realised that's a bit of a problem. Quick knights are now on um, four one, leading four one, even taking a three one lead after the first. You calculate all that first set. You can hear the cogs in your head turning. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like I'm talking and doing basic the updates as well. It would be nice if you could fill in a little bit when I'm actually trying to update the scoreboard. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of pick up on that. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, we've got to try and driving into Warband right now. Warband looking Oh, headshot there really on DSL. Yeah, DSL was under headshot. Uh, so Arthur again. Warband did a terrible position. They just kind of been pressed against the fridge. And they're just being massacred by the Teutonic who's just driving at them. Arthur takes down Demon Star. Bellet, Stig. Logmir, Tarok. It's just you guys. Eight to kill. Not looking good, guys. Tarok goes down. Bellet, not got much health. And it's... Teutonic just ran at them and... and we saw what uh, the Saracen was doing <laughs> against ORP. You can't, you can't take a big fight like this walking backwards. There's an instant disadvantage in walking backwards, which is that you're slower, can't move around much. It's just, you know, you, you will lose to a team which is running forwards and can basically, you know, be more... Well, that's more it, when the momentum's with the attackers, like... Always is, yeah. yeah. And they'll keep bashing your shields as you're holding yours up, so they'll break your shields first as well. Yeah, I am doing the current work here, guys. Wild band again, just driving across the river here. Straight into the forest. A like different approach now, they're not going to go by the bridge. You don't want to get pressed up against that, that bridge last round, which was... Teutonic just taking a bit of a longer route yeah, around to uh, work for the engagement this time. Yeah, they're sitting a few players back as well. They'll just bring their cab in. The engagement starts. They do want to play out the round in the same way, though. This, uh, they're just going to go for it, it looks like. Brown and Kefren doing some freaky stuff, moving down towards the riverbank. And both teams being a bit more cautious this round, which is strange from Teutonic because... I mean, they won so convincingly just by pressing forward. I think it's maybe wise of them there. I mean, Warband looked like they were just trying to draw them back there by... Uh... Three of them pulling back to the storm bridge, but they've got an archer on either side of it. They've got cab wear, and it's probably in uh, Teutonic's favour just to hang back. And yeah, you can see that in their class setups, uh, Warband going a lot more archer heavy, reverting to classic Russian style. Love those crossfires. And you know, speaking to people a lot about the, the meta game, we've got all these heavy infantry charges going on at the moment. There's lots of people who still believe that. You know, pulling back, setting up those crossfires is the way to do it, it's the way to combat these hard infantry pushes. Um, but but really, for a lot of teams, when, when they try that, it's still not just it's not quite working at the moment. We've got Warband going for that as well. The fact that they're rushing, it's going to be in their blood anyway. Again, they're not going to get to try it because the flag has spawned um, way, way over behind the ruins. In a distant position. Just like not that close to it already, so it's not going to be too advantageous then they didn't send anyone back there. They could send some cav there as well to raise it a little bit, but they're probably best off just making sure they've got some protection from uh predatory warband cav. Although, you know, the, the predation of warbands cavalry hasn't been too threatening so far this match. We can say that quite confidently. We're actually gonna have Teutonic taking a fight by these ruins. They kind of went behind him and they, they peekaboo surprised come out for this engagement. Barbarian Warlord coming in with his horse, knocking everyone down, causing the problems that the Warband Cavalry haven't been able to really cause at the moment. That said, Nezon gets a kill. Pull two back by uh, Teutonic, three back now. There's a double kill from Barbarian Warlord and a kill from Sharon against the Stig. Wipe gets a kill, Sharon with another one, and again, you can just see a snowballing out of control for Warband. They're losing everything. Game pulls one back, but then it's another two for Teutonic, and it's blog me left. I'm afraid. <laughs> Got a shield and a scimitar, which is well, wow, it's not about anything anymore. Poor guy. So is this the last round before we move on to the next map? Um, it is. And what is the next map? Next map is going to be Sandy Bush. Wadia versus Vegas. Point out in the chat, yeah, we got sort of the four infantry for Teutonic. We saw this again in uh, AB versus Bohemian. Team's taking four infantry on this map now, and it's like a standard move. That's what's so weird. For so long, this would be a two, maybe three infantry map. We got Teutonic happily sitting on four. They were a team that, when we saw them against ORP, they were really happy to go. Heavy Teutonic on, um, had the fast push to the uh, I think they took like now. six infantry on Mountain Fortress as well. They're really confident in the, confident in the infantry game as well. 
and three cavalry is really causing um, problems for Warband. Especially with the quality as well. Sir Arthur and Barbarian Warlord especially. We would have had no answer to no answer to them on either spawn. Really nice knockdown and kill there on Tarok. Volcanic, Volcanic gets the finish. Doesn't get a kill against Wiper and we've got sort of a separated fight going on here, but Teutonic sort of seems to be separating the Warband players and isolating them, but Nezin does get another kill. And actually Teutonic players going down now. DSL takes one as well. Not exactly what's going on. It looks like Teutonic are gaining uh, sort of sort of losing players there. Logma takes down Kefren. Just four Teutonic players against seven of Warband. We've seen the comeback from worse, but I think we're finally gonna take this round. Caron is heavy out now, but he's having to deal with Logma. He's still okay. Finally, does take him down. Throw Arthur on his horse as well. That's got to be pretty low health. Getting hedgehoggy. Cat battles out on the field as well. Barbarian World here outnumbered. Eventually falls down and gets finished off by DSL. So Arthur gets a nice couch lance on DSL, takes him down. But it's just him and Hector left now. Hector gets a kill elsewhere as well. Takes down Logma. There's still five Warband players, and this, this really isn't going to happen for Shitonic. Surprising in both sets here, we've seen Warband do a lot better in the last round. After taking three rounds down, you'd think it would have snowballed out of control. They didn't really change anything up in their class setups either. Well, I think it, in that round, uh, instead of actually pushing across themselves, they've just hung on their side of the river and then used the river to negate the calf. Uh, they received so them. And fighting in that river is an advantage as well because they've got um, a more archer heavy setup. I, I'd agree, but. Oh, oh, a weird setup from Sothra. He's got an Akaton and a great helmet. <laughs> That's a role playing setup <laughs> I've ever seen one. <laughs> you want to get that body armor? Just get that great helmet. <laughs> Through Knight of the Realm. Okay, guys. We're just going to bring up a small, small splash screen now as we wait for the next round. We're having a few production issues today because um, working from a different setup right now. So, uh. Minor mistakes. Next up is going to be, as you can see on the screen, Sandy Bush, Twilio vs. Vegas. Project, what do you think of that? Well, versus yeah, Vegas and Sandy Bush. My immediate thoughts would be that uh, Swadi is going to have the advantage with the crossbows over Vegas. I, I, on this map, personally, I prefer to see the aggressive player. I like to see teams push hard and fast, and uh, that's what I'd like to see in the, uh, the rounds coming up. I don't yeah, think, I think uh, it's, it's definitely a map you can be aggressive on. There's I don't think Teutonic Cavs are going to come into play as much, but I, I still think uh, if they have Sir Arthur knocking about, it could be quite an influential there player is space, on this map yeah. as well. Both sides can get really heavy horses. They get heavy horses, particularly brutal. It's got that maneuverability as well. We saw against um, Bohemian and AB the match we streamed uh, earlier this week, which you can check on MBTV replay VODs up on the screen. That, um, that super aggressive play well, definitely can be really effective. We saw AB just doing it every round against um, Bohemians and uh, just crushing them with the melee engagements. I think Vegas has quite an advantage with those with the scimitars and the better shields. If it does break down a little bit and the teams play a bit more passively, we're, I think we're likely to see the crossbows coming into their own, but uh, personally I'm expecting aggression. As, as you hope for, instead we might be seeing. People in chat saying Warband. Yeah, um, both teams are ready now. I think we're going Warband fancy themselves a little bit stronger on the closed maps. So this could be the chance for a turnaround. They did get two kills on the first map, so it's uh, still to play for. In fact, that's um, is that exactly how far AB were behind against Bohemians, and they pulled that back. So anything can happen from here. Pull up the stream. Well, we're going to have a quick map preview. So just okay. Um, this is live now. Um, one second, man. Teutonic had just taken the one cav. Oh, oh, Barbarian Warlord. For the map review, dude. Oh, 
Okay, and now we're moving into the game. These videos, it's the video making us little uh, map preview videos. A little bit of uh, prestige there. We missed the first one because uh, we were a bit late starting the game, and they started really on time. Very efficient these teams. In fact, it's only been 30 minutes gone, and the first map is already done. Like the map is going to be finished in probably under an hour. Sandy Bush is not known for being a slow map. All bands sitting in their spawn, which is pretty much a mistake. These spawns are not campable places. They can be attacked very easily. You have a sort of dodgy downward slope. No real decent cover to shoot from. Not, not going to attack them, though. They're going to probably wait for the flags. Just think we're actually seeing this sort of passive play. After such aggression on Phil by the River, it seems strange to see her passivity on Sandy Bush. One of the most aggressively viable maps going. No hits from either archers so far. I think seeing um, Logman not taking a shield. I don't know about the other Warband war archers, but I think you really do want a shield on this map. You're going to be getting into a melee fight eventually. Black spawns in the graveyard. Warband war going to be on the scene a little bit earlier. BSL also without a shield. Looks like she's going to try and approach from both sides. We've got uh, Kefren coming in from. Small alley. The rest are going to be trying to, trying to approach on the other side, but uh, we're actually moving out to attack them. Uh, take down Kefren already. And these sort of brutal melee fights, I like Karak could do some real work. As he comes in with the bump, with the, with the bump slash. He's on Hector. So Arthur pulls, pulls like a kill against uh, Mogmir, but Levy, Hinox, and DSL all getting kills here. Warband really showing that perhaps they are a lot better on post maps. Bertrand takes down Wiper as well. Then he goes down and that's your So that's almost a uh, just clean one sweep left, for yeah. Warband there. Just Logma going down. And I think it's really unnerving for a team when they switch maps and then you know, after after having dominated they lose the first round, especially so convincingly. It's really unnerving because they they know they only need what three rounds or two rounds in a draw to win this match. But when they get dominated so hard, it's, it puts a lot of pressure on a team like um, Teutonic. Got them waiting all behind spawn right now. They're just going to wait for the flag and then just charge in. So Alpha switched from a uh, range setup now, he's uh, switched to Calf. So they've got the two Calf now. Nice uh, like the Swadian, relying so heavily on, on your melee as Swadians, could possibly be a mistake. Because I mean, realistically, I mean, they've all got gambesons and leather jerkins. This is not not a decent setup to deal with a big infantry fight. Go back to warband. We'll see. We should have a few people with um, the metal armor. Not quite yet, but oh, we've got Tarak with some with some metal. Let's make a big difference. This leather armor is a bit heavier than the gambeson as well. Maybe you can tweet me out, Captain Lost. Comment in the chat. Real super passive play from both teams here. I think this is. I'm going to say Warband going to move out now because they are kind of waiting and they yeah, want to know what you're telling doing. They're probably even know exactly what's going on right now. We got a nice surprise here <laughs> as uh, Levy pokes his head around. <laughs> the whole Teutonic team, which are all going to burst out. And he needs to get support over here pretty quickly because Teutonic are really running at them. They get one or two free kills here quite early. Hector takes down Levy. But trying to get stuck in the thick of it as well. Hillot lost some health. And he's Teutonic Cavalry do some work as well. This is nice from Teutonic. So Arthur takes down Hillot. Hillot takes down the stick. Nezon's got his heavy horse, so he's going to be a uh, problem cause of it. But trying to take down Tarek, that's really bad for Warband right there. DSL and Logma pulling kills back. Super close right now. Five against five, or five against four. Just four for uh, Warband at the moment. DSL will Put it be back, nice four against four. This takes down Kanuni. And the killer side, so it's 3v3. Three super, super, super close. Logmir on decent health though. And uh, sort of... The Warband Archers left, I think they perhaps were not quite where they need to be for this fight. Nezan's going to keep harassing the Egyptonic players, but he's taking a risk here I think because... I mean those Warband Archers... I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Not near his Warband Archers. Four. Not going to sit on the... 
Ventus, Hector, and Saratha. Looking pretty worse for wear. Well, well then, pretty much all on full health. The class setups are not ideal for them. They don't really want an archer in this situation. It can be helpful, but it's it's difficult to, to use. And if if you try to just go for them, and occupy them in that melee fight. Oh, well, they've done a really, really awesome side hit of uh, Warband. They sent DSL on one side, Logma down the other. The other, and they they split Teutonic here, giving them a potential for an advantage. Denzel takes down Logma in that duel, so that's uh, well not a duel, sorry, in this in this fight, that is the advantage now to Teutonic. And Warband have got to pull a kill back before this goes out of their favour. DSL goes down to Hector though, and could be the round for Warband now. I think uh, Teutonic even raising that flag. Denzel not quite running away, still. Fancy is a bit of a fight, but I think she, she, she should just go away to be able to keep that horse alive. Maybe a better chance for the next round. Ball getting really um, out of control here for Ball Banders. Utonic Knights take a 7 3 lead. Just one more round and they'll be um, unbeatable, it looks like. Well, they will be no, technically unbeatable. I think Warband will be ready for that. That same tactic. I think it was a bit reckless to just poke, poke around that corner. I suppose they couldn't have known. They had real, no real way of knowing. It was well, a smart move yeah, for to just burst around and take them all down like that. They were so spread out across that courtyard, but that could have happened at any place they broke through. It could have happened on the right, on the left, so not moving as a unit around the corners was a costly mistake. Yeah. Not going to try and play for the same thing as well. Oh, it's take advantage of Warband's right natural curiosity. Build the cat. Build uh, the Russians. I'm going to sit there spawn again. I think Teutonic could be winning rounds just by attacking spawn spells because this is not a good place to hold at all. Unless I think their strategy is working decently well. Really weird to see this being played, played so passively, I think, at the moment. We have some um, gear improvements from the side here. Some whole virgins coming out. And some. Oh, we've got an elite scimitar looted. Warband is getting a bit Hector. curious here, uh, moving out into the courtyard again. I don't think they're going to not pushing the same <laughs> Well, some cells in a position where they can be shot at all those. And you see Wiper's going to pop out and sort of let them know that, yeah, we're still here. Take a few shots with the crossbow. This heavy armor's going to be even more an advantage, though, for um, Tonic. Yeah, heavy armor can sometimes be a double-edged sword. You can feel a bit confident, make a few mistakes a bit more easy. Tonic going to go, well, they're going to send Kefren into that graveyard, which is... I think they think, they think that there's an archer up on that position, which there actually is now, but... This is perhaps a smart move then, but he's going to come out and they're going to take the fight at the courtyard. Um, I can go down from either side. Oh, it's a bad team kill from Teutonic there, but trying to levy getting kills as well. Oh, there was another one against Wiper and Teutonic just not playing them from their side. Only three players left now for Teutonic. After a really quick fight. Uh, explosive, really. And um, all about getting, getting the advantage in a big way. They still got DSL up in that position, completely unchallenged. Or oh, not completely unchallenged. We've got someone just coming up to deal with him now. Oh, that was a calf and he's gone away. Sir Arthur up here. Trying to take down the stake, but Sir Arthur does go down to the DSL headshot. Oberon Wall loses his horse as well. DSL with another nice kill there, Sharon. Oh, actually goes down to the kick from Tarek there. Brutal. This guy has got real style. <laughs> That nice jump slash on the last map. And Warband sort of when the fighters are breaking out there, getting in the right spots, doing some nice things. But I think staying in the spawn, I just still think is a, a total mistake. If if Chitoni did decide, decide to do something different here, they could gain a massive advantage. Although, you know, rushing that spawn from the rushing that low road from the Chitonic spawn is a mistake though, because it's a bit imbalanced. Perhaps Warband taking advantage of that. I mean, the Teutonic won't go down there. 
hope I'm moving a little bit more into the graveyard this time anyway. I'm kind of happy just to um, play the waiting game as well. Really so weird to see Sandy Bush being played out like this. Remember if Warband wants to win, they have to win um, every round now. Or get some draws and do some weird stuff, but that's just not going to happen. I need four rounds and a draw. Or just five rounds. Really hard for them to come back from this. Make sure you don't use this as your advertisement to potential sponsors. Look how exciting and fast paced <laughs> this game is. Well, which is normally a, a real, <laughs> it a usually real is. Map, yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is the exact opposite to what I wanted to see on this map, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's completely. I, I think it's really surprised me at least, especially with the current meta game where people are just so, so aggressive. Yeah, so up in his favourite spot here. Playing a female character. We've got um, a few female characters around. Tonic Wiper, Tonic Kefren. Uh, just DSL from the Warband team. Some people prefer it because it's a, lot, a bit smaller. There's obviously no difference in the stats. Gender equality in Warband. Smaller, so you can kind of, I don't know, it feels a bit... Turkish so gets totally PC. Yeah, obviously. Hi. I'm like sticking as a unit, doing pretty well there. Yeah, back off and onto that flag. Yes, I with a kill though. But this, again, they're backing off in this fight, which is completely disadvantaged them. But Baron Waller goes down to DSL. He got sort of elsewhere away from the fight. Arthur coming in to do some damage, but doesn't actually get anything done. Tarok and Sabertron are actually getting a double kill here. Triple kill for Sabertron. Well, what much to say about that. Dominating uh, an infantry <laughs> fight. He's got his Elite Scimitar and. A whitewash uh, there for Warband. Yeah, a complete whitewash. Again, teams should be realizing that that, that backing off is causing them problems. Oh, you're talking about staying quite close to the unit there, I think. I'm surprised it went that badly for them. Take the score here. It is now 5 7. Very nice. And we're not just like, I'm not live just yet. We have some more hack accusations in the game. It's, um, well, it's never nice when a game like this gets a bit bitter. As it gets closer, obviously the chances get a bit higher, but I, I think it's. I don't really think there's much chance of uh, any hacking on this map, and honestly, I don't think it's a huge advantage either. Not at all. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see how a wall hacked. Why wouldn't you told this team at the start when they ran around the bloody corner and got massacred? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> From the surprise attack. <laughs> <laughs> I can, can't get much more clear evidence than that, can you? It's all complete dirt looking around the corner like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could say it was a cunning ruse, but in, the, in that case, you know, not going to give Yeah, why would you throw away from anyone? Yeah. <laughs> deliberately, like, use it against themselves. <laughs> no issue. I'm just doing some, um, some fun attacking. <laughs> Not doing really anything. <laughs> Guys, that's why you think he's gonna win. Send us a little tweet. We have some, a tweet from Naifu saying, Greetings from Warband Clan. He's actually playing at the moment. Greetings, Naifu. Shout out to you. Might be on the bench for the last set. We'll see what's up, what's up with that. Teams now going to be going live. Really props to these teams for the efficient way in which they've played this match. We've got a new player joining the server. Mm. This be a troll. Will we have another restart? Let's see. Or is he just going to sit? Uh, he's been kicked. Bring up the stream then. I think we are live. Warbang going to move into the low road and sit some people back. We weren't actually completely going to be copying Teutonic tactics and uh, sit the whole team behind that wall. I think that's a, well, not the whole team, but this wall is a particularly advantageous spot. 
Yeah, I don't think either of the spawns are advantageous to be honest. I think both teams are making a mistake by sitting there. I mean, from the from this spawn at least, from the Teutonic spawn, you can easily take the low road. Perhaps have an easier chance to get graveyard as well, so it's probably worth taking one of them. Oh, for sure, yeah. Graveyard's a bit better as well because you've got a nice overview of the middle flag as well if it spawns. That is a little bit further away from the other flag. But we're just kind of sitting in their spawn. Let's... Okay, here we go. We've got a bit of movement now. Okay. Edge towards the courtyard. Have some preparation for the flag. It was a little bit early. We've got about 30 seconds left. It is going to spawn as it has spawned every round, I think, this map. Which is bizarre because that like, never <laughs> happens. Well, maybe that's why they've, the, both teams have been driven to these tactics. The use of the super aggressive player from people on this but map, I, so they've, I they've still just think sat a super back aggressive and play. I well, think it would, probably still <laughs> it work, would work. Like, yeah. I just think, like, think we're getting advantage by doing it. Like, well, maybe they're both thinking that they will soak up one of these attacks and you know win their own, but I've it's seen not coming once. So. This game, exactly, my team yeah. has been backing off and won the fight. Well. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get you into the mindset. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what they're thinking. Yeah, hey, obviously, it's not. It's not nice to just say all oh, these teams are just. Being stupid, like, <laughs> but, I mean, I think I think it's an error uh, from both parts. Oh, I mean, sure. it's, it's obviously hard when you're in the game. Like, each in, each game has its own kind of meta, really. <laughs> like, you sort of get involved in, in all sorts of weird stuff without playing that right. I won't be too critical. But Warband coming up this ladder, driving down the Teutonic Archers, sort of eliminates that threat already pretty well. We got the Warband. Uh, infantry moving into the graveyard as well now. Barbarian Warlord takes down the stake, but uh, two kills back for Warband with DSL and Tarot. Denzel takes down Helot, but Sebatron with another kill. And the Warband infantry just looking dominant here. Sebatron with uh, uh, one more kill as well. And again, Warband taking advantage in this round. Just Sorry, getting another kill though. Three Teutonic players left. Sharon, Hector, and Saratha. Both goes down. Sharon and Hector uh, do manage to double team Tarok there. Price went down a little bit needlessly there. He did have some, he did have some teammates. Firing squad up on the, on the still wall. Raising <laughs> the flag here. So, um, Warband got to be a little bit careful, but there's, there is enough time left really for, for us to be too much of an issue. Logma going to get into the melee fight now and start putting it out. Demon Star gets, that, gets the crossbow. Killing. Warband now raising the flag a little bit. Aaron, shield's gone down. All his friends are dead. Poor guy. He goes to DSL. That's that little bit of combat gold. And now we'll play to Warband. Giving us a real match here. Yeah, they're still in it, you know. 6-2, right back up to 6-7. And we've seen, because these maps, built by the River and Sally, which are so different, you see these kind of comebacks as teams prefer these different styles. Teutonic going areas. for the aggressive push now straight away. Warband yeah, Teutonic going to go them. forward. Perhaps listening to the Fight stream. Breaking out. Warband going to go for it as well. Both teams have just said, oh. <laughs> but I think it's a mis this is probably bad for Warband to take much better in many fights. So they're probably going to have to try and... Well, they've, they've successfully found some space for their cavalry, which I think is perhaps the best thing they could have done. They're all player down now, but... Probably don't have a bit of space. Sarathos so does get a kill. Does get a team kill oh, though, now, and uh, not ideal. Barbarian Warlord gets one against the Stig. Um, they're all pretty close stuff. Six. Six Half players aside, Barbarian Warlord doing some nice work. Still got really nice health as well. Yeah, so pulled back a kill against Sharon. The Bertrand in a lot of pressure here, and he's a key player for Warband. They've got to find some support for him. But elsewhere, Warband is some really nice work. I think that's on, perhaps on the low road. Uh, or not in the low road, but in the graveyard maybe. Um, Warband taking down some, some Teutonic players. The Bertrand does go down to Densis eventually, but just two, two Teutonic players left. Just one now against the four Warbands, and. Warband win the first super aggressive round that we've actually seen in this map. Actually get a headshot there. That was a killer. Nice work by Logma. Takes down Barbarian Warlord. And even with um decent kill count that he's been getting, he's on three and two. Dying like that. No, dying every round is gonna slow down your goal progress progression. I think that's perhaps the right thing that you don't need to be doing. They're not winning these many fights. The fact that they drew Warband into the open area. Gave they have a chance. Sarathor had that unfortunate team kill. And I think there was a point in that round where it was sort of teetering on a pivot. 
and Warband just gained that little bit of an advantage. If I think if Teutonic, Teutonic's Cav could have done a slightly better job, they could have easily taken that. So I think if I was Teutonic, I would have tried to do the same thing, but just hope Serata doesn't gnaws it up. And again, I'm not Teutonic, and they are going to sit in their spawn. <laughs> so, that's fine. Go over the class setups again. We do have Warband still. Pretty uh, range heavy for a map like this. We've actually got two two infantry less than uh, Tonic do. I think at the start of the round that gives them a problem. As as the fights break down and they have that, that extra range support, they win the smaller fights pretty much guaranteed. But at the start of the round, Tonic do have the, the extra shock factor. I think when the fight breaks out, Tonic do need to use that to their advantage, get some aggression in, and try and carry some momentum through uh, to finish it off, and then eventually deal with those crossbows. That's gotta be their approach, I would say. Warband just sneaking out now, making the way. <laughs> Very tensitively towards the graveyard. <laughs> Look how slow they're edging up the wall. Not like one of them at a time is like <laughs> <laughs> blending in with the background. <laughs> I see us lads. Staying Keep in the moving. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an Assassin's Creed kind of map. <laughs> Though. I mean, you think about it, they've got 2 6 down and now they're 7 7. You've got to be pumping. And this is a big moment for Warband as well because it will be the first time they've won against basically a decent team in the league. And they actually get 4 points if they win this as well because they are level below level Teutonic. Looks like they're starting off on the flag. Um, so they're going to raise that a little bit. Not going to have too much of an impact because there's plenty of time left in this round. And Teutonic is still pretty close. I think the flag is a nice. Nice position for Teutonic, you can see already. That's what um, from Sharon gets a kill after slides. being bu after Bertrand was bumped by Sarafa. And those, uh, another kill for the Teutonic Cav, who have just been um, outstanding, I think, throughout the whole match. But well, Baron does go down there now to a, a snipe from Demon Star. Oh. Hector and Arthur getting kills on Tarakod and the Stig, so they are going to gain an advantage in this round. Four Warbanders left against Devon Teutonic. I think they can still do this, but they need to do it fast. Super fast, actually. Uh, Nezzle goes down yeah, to so Catherine and it's, it's, it's going to go 8-7 to Teutonic. Yeah, it goes down. It comes back to what I said, I think this is a better area for Teutonic to be fighting in. The fact that they finally managed to find an even fight where they didn't do any stupid stuff like get team kills. They were able to get the advantage in this area, the central, central plane. And then so, um, Teutonic Knights can't actually lose now. Warband are going to be fighting this round out for, for a draw. Draw is decent though. A point is a point, and those points uh, they add up. They're valuable in the league. If there is a draw, I don't know, I don't know who I would be trying to interview. <laughs> Perhaps Sir Arthur, because he was so, been so beast the whole game. We'll see. Well, he's got the English skills. Tensions high though. Teutonic really want to get this win. If they don't win here, they start to slip pretty far behind the front pack. And at the start of the league, these guys were up with the front runners. They got four wins, I think, in their first four games. Perhaps had a slightly easy run, but um, not to be. Oh, no, perhaps it wasn't four wins, but in fact, I think they're still sitting on four wins. They haven't been doing too well lately after their strong start. So it's, it's important for them to get this, not lose pace too much. They're going to sit in their spawn. Hope for that central flag spot. I think. I think if it spawns somewhere else, Warband have a really strong chance of taking this. But nerves and tension, they can all add up. Uh, we may well see. Um, may well see that having an effect in this last round. I'm going to wait it out. It. What is it they say? Is like a baseball term. The the bottom of the ninth, or something like that. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. <laughs> like, it's like the ninth innings. Uh, uh, they have yeah, nine innings yeah. in baseball. That says it all to me. You have two innings. <laughs> Everyone knows that. <laughs> Cricket. Nine innings. Absurd. Okay. Yeah, the flags are the 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 tonic. Sir Arthur already um, strutting his stuff out in his courtyard, <laughs> <laughs> making himself a threat. But he's going to get a couple of barrels by the, uh, the, yeah. the bolts. Yeah, it does back off a little bit. 
Warband, I think, not straight on the flag this time. They're going to take a little bit of a slower approach. They actually get the, uh, the first death, though. So Bertrand goes to the ground to Kefren. Chronic Cal come in now. Kefren gets, gets a double kill, and the, they're running away with it. She's going to get this round, I think. Garth comes in, takes down Nezen. Couch Lance. And this cap threat has just been, the whole game has been too much for, for Warband, I'm afraid. Then to take down the stick. Demon Star pulls a back on Hector. But Chuck's not even looking at the flag now. They just want to kill all these Warband players. They want all of this blood, all of this glory. BSL goes down as well. Logmere goes down. And. Sorry, Warband. That's it for you. Uh, to go into week 9 um, with a loss. It's a great effort from them, but then, you know. Yeah, they Maybe did a really good job of pulling it back, match. actually. They technically won the second map 5 3. So it was a really nice game. Um, we're just going to bring up the splash screen now for the post game. And uh, if you guys hang around, we're going to try and get a bit of an interview going. We'll, we'll see. Let's see what's up with that. Let me just put up the score so you know what's going on. Another 9 7. This seems something about streamed games, they seem like destined to be 9 7. Always. <laughs> Which is great for us. We love to see close games. See if we can bring someone in for an interview right now. What are your final, final thoughts on that map? What do you think? Um... Well, I think the match was won by uh, the cavalry in the end. Um, yeah. They were dominant throughout. In particular on the first map, Sir Arthur was unbelievable. But uh, Barbarian Warlord was just as strong throughout the entire match. So it, you know, I couldn't really give you a man of the match out of the two of them. I think they were brilliant as a unit, and I think they played yeah. really well together. I think both Sir Arthur and Barbarian Warlord were, were really strong for Teutonic throughout. And... I think not, perhaps not really too famous um, cavalry players, particularly. But uh, after that match, they make a bit of a name for themselves. I'm bugging Teutonic to see if anyone can come for an interview. So they'd be. So who would be your um, man of the match? Then would it be? Barbarian Warlord or...? Well, like I said, it'd, it'd have to be between the two of them. I mean, I think Barbarian Warlord played Cav exclusively throughout. Uh, when we got onto the second map, so after it switched uh, uh, crossbow at the start and then switched back to Cav, so... I don't know. Between the two of them, I think they were both outstanding. On the first map, it was Sir Arthur, and on the second map, it was uh, Barbarian Warlord, so... Yeah, I, I, I agree with I that. Couldn't, I couldn't yeah, decide between well, the two of them. What about Warband? Where would you see their um, strengths? Well, the strengths were clearly in the melee when things were, you know, especially in that close map, uh, when the fight broke out, that's where their advantage was, but they didn't play to that. They never looked for the the aggressive approach and, you know, to bring the fight out early on. Both teams were yeah, happy on the second map to just sit back when, really, I think we should have seen more, uh, more of the aggressiveness, which we saw Definitely the their map. tactics weren't playing to their strengths uh, for all that match. We saw some really nice play from Tarok, though. I think he's got to be the man of the match. Oh, for sure, yeah. So Bertram was did some really nice stuff on the second map. Actually, he got a ton of kills, but... Tarok just had that kind of extra flair, that jump slash at the start. You can check that on the replay as well, that was killer. <laughs> Love to see that. Highlights. Do you have a highlights reel? This week's matches. No, we don't actually. Uh, something I like to do. MBTV. Working on getting someone to come and do an interview now. Uh, don't, don't want to speak English. <laughs> I could do a total <laughs> interview, but I think that would be a fairly narrow audience. <laughs> I think people would be too interested in that. If anyone's going to come. Guys, remember later on we've got um, at 19 BST, it's going to be a big match between Saracens and SOE. Um, I'm going to be commenting that with E Man. Project Changer's going to go back to his uh, various activities. Thanks very much for commenting with me, though. It's been an nice. uh, absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. I always like watching the Warband matches. Yeah, super close as well. Really nice match, I think. Um. Well, we're not, not going to have an interview. I think the Teutonic aren't interested in uh, speaking English. They're not in it for the pro firm. Or promoting their brand. Uh, they're just there to do what they do. <laughs> Fucking win matches, take names. I suppose they get some character in their own sense. But it's a shame because the interviews are quite they're fun. They're, we always enjoy doing them. But um, anyway. Uh, so thanks very much everyone for watching. Come back in just an hour when we'll be kicking off with Saracens vs SOE. And uh, any final thoughts, Project? Uh, no. <laughs> well played to both teams. Uh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd echo that, and I say um, once again, thanks, thanks all for coming, and uh, good, good night, good evening.